Um, so as Sean said, go ahead and put your questions and answers if there's questions that arise as we're presenting um, in the question and answer, and we can answer some of them in writing uh, for others to see. We can answer some of them and incorporate them into our presentation. We can answer kind of and group them afterwards, and then we will also use the raise hand feature um, after our presentation. So my name is Melanie Mintz, and I am the Community Development Director. I am joined by our city manager, Karen Pincus, Sean Moss, our uh, planning manager, and Aisa Shuri, our affordable housing program manager. Um, and I'm also joined by our fantastic consultants group four, who many of you have interacted with. Um, Don Merkis and Rita John are both on. And I, uh, there are, uh, I know Lisa Motoyama is on and I will look uh, there, I will capture, but we have some council members on. We also have representatives from the development team for those of you that know that what we're looking at is uh, pot, the potential for including a library as a part of the development at El Cerrito Plaza. Importantly, um, we can go to the next slide, um, Aisa. Um, let's see. Uh, so importantly, um, tonight's meeting, you know, could it, when you hear library, it could mean all kinds of things. What we're really here uh, wanting to introduce tonight is that we, the city is studying the feasibility of including a library on the ground floor of uh, an affordable housing building at the El Cerrito Plaza Transit Oriented Development Project. We aren't going to get into a ton of detail about that project tonight. Um, for those that are very interested in that project or a little interested, uh, September 7th, we have a joint study session with our design review board and planning commission at 7.30. And we'll talk about that again later in the evening. And that is really when the project will be overviewed. And it'll be a lot more than what you've seen at previous meetings in that the, the development team and architects and BART have made a lot of progress in terms of really beginning to lay out the site plan and some of the site amenities and public benefits and open space. and. So that meeting is really going to get into that. And one of the reasons we wanted to have this meeting tonight is to be able to go lay a foundation for how the library is being explored as a part of this project. So that when you participate in the upcoming project, which has a lot to talk about, the library will have had this uh, introduction tonight. Um, so again, you'll see some, some, some images from that project, but we won't be going into too much detail about that project. I invite you to come on September 7th. And I think many of you that I see were also at the pop-up um, a couple of weeks ago at El Cerrito Plaza BART Station. So I'm going to uh, quickly just go over that project and the opportunity that we're examining just so you kind of have a, a framework for what we're, what we're talking about tonight. And then I will pass it on to group four, who will look more at kind of how did we arrive um, at needing a new library um, and looking at some of the kind of um, precedents in other places that are in a similar context and other information. Um, about li what we know of as library needs. And then we'll talk about next steps. Um, the other thing I didn't say, and I can't see exactly on the webinar right now, but we are collaborating closely with county, um, with county library staff and our local librarians um, in, in this conversation. So we'll be involving them throughout. Obviously this uh, you'll learn tonight for those that don't know, it is a county, uh, it's, a, it's a, a library within the county system and the county does provide um, the base staffing and all the collections and all the programming and the city uh, supplements that. So it's a real collaborative effort. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so quickly, in terms of background for the library itself, and then I'll talk about uh, for the library at the plaza. So this first slide kind of starts in 2002 um, when our current city manager actually was um, looking for grants to actually be able to rebuild our library, which you'll see later on is under size and hasn't been updated, I think, since the 60s. Um, that opportunity went away. Uh, it was looking, I think, at the senior center site and other sites, um, and that, uh, that didn't move ahead. So the city council reaffirmed that the library is a priority when they did their first uh, modern uh, strategic plan in 2013 and reaffirmed that when we did it again, I think, in 2018. So as a part of that, we did a needs assessment in 2014 to really understand what would a modern library look like. And we started to look at site options and cost models. Um, some of you might know that one of the sites the city was uh, strongly thinking about was on Mosier, um, where Portola, at the bottom site, uh, where Portola uh, Middle School used to be. Um, that ended up not working with the school district. And so the city council uh, requested that, you know, started thinking again about downtown. The, a downtown library had been thought of at various times in the past. And uh, as we were entering into doing the ballot measure, we uh, 
really wanted to affirm that that would be possible. So we entered into an MOU with BART to study the feasibility of that site. Uh, the ballot uh, measure fell slightly short of the supermajority that was needed. Um, and so we continued to explore options and explore options in particular um, at the BART property. Um, alongside thinking about the, the uh, downtown El Cerrito Plaza BART site, for the library, it's also been viewed as um, a site for development of housing um, and potentially commercial. Um, in 2018, the legislature passed AB 2923 that required minimum zoning on BART owned parcels. Our zoning on the majority of that was already um, consistent with what the state was looking for on other BART parcels. So we already had our San Pablo Avenue specific plan. Uh, which was very aligned with AB 2923. There's some differences in terms of process, but in terms of overall uh, vision for what development at a BART station could bring the city in terms of economic development, foot traffic, and uh, really uh, helping to build out a downtown um, was consistent. And so BART uh, identified the city really as one of its first uh, AB 2923 projects. Um, and so in 2019, we did a, a library workshop just to kind of reconnect with the community to start this library conversation that we're continuing now. Um, and then also in 2019, um, the city formally requested that BART include a potential library in its RFP to develop the site. So kind of to build that history again, first, we wanted to study the feasibility. We did do some feasibility work with BART and we realized really the best opportunity for determining true feasibility would bring to be bringing the development team on board to actually start to put the pieces together. Um, City Council will still have, uh, will need to still make a decision about whether it is being included, and we'll get into that later as well. Next slide, please. So in terms of actually the project background at this plaza uh, site, again, you'll remember in 2016 that uh, the City and the BART Board uh, entered into an MOU or authorized, both of them authorized, and the City requested uh, that, we, that we study the feasibility of a library at this site. Um, in 2019, it was a really busy year before the pandemic hit, and this is only part of it. We had uh, simul parallel to all these meetings, we were doing a lot of San Pablo Avenue specific plan meetings and others, but there was a council presentation um, regarding the RFP um, and goals and objectives and just the opportunities at the El Cerrito Plaza BART station in February. We had a lot of meetings, um, including in August and October to really uh, engage the public both, uh, I think we had some of these at Hannah Gardens next door to City Hall and some as uh, pop-up meetings at the BART station itself to make sure we were reaching people. And then together, uh, BART and the city developed a set of goals and objectives, um, which there'll be a URL later. You can look at those and we will highlight some in a moment. Um, just really agreeing that we had uh, consistent and, and mutually supportive goals and objectives for the site. Um, I can also tell anybody who's wanting to kind of poke through as you're double tasking, listening to the webinar and looking up information yourself. Um, all of this information is collected on our uh, at elcerito.org backslash TOD or backslash library. And through those, you can also get to the BART pages. So you can find these resolutions and meeting materials. Um, in 2020, um, mid 2020, BART uh, issued a request for qualifications and we did, they did an RFQ instead of an RFP partly because we knew there were a lot of things still to solve. So we weren't, they weren't looking for a specific proposal as much as a, a really highly qualified team with the right vision. Um, they entered into a, an exclusive negotiating agreement with a team um, headed by Related of California and Holiday. Um, we won't get too much into the development team tonight because you will have an opportunity to meet them at the September 7th meeting. Um, but BART during this time also, many of you have participated, has, uh, has grants and has been um, conducting a study called the Berkeley El Cerrito Station Access Planning because they're looking at similar development at Ashby and North Berkeley. So really wanted to look at the whole, what's called the R-Line corridor or the I-80 corridor. I'm just looking at as uh, surface parking is replaced by these other active uses, how, do, how, do, how does everyone access um, their stations? Um, they've been doing extensive public engagement um, and again, the next big meeting where you get to see this all put together is on September 7th. Right, next slide, please. Um, this might be a little different than some of them that you've seen. It's been evolving. Uh, the project, project team has been working hard to meet all of the various needs and opportunities at this site. Um, so you can see the BART tracks in the middle of the slide, uh, development uh, along Richmond Street, east of the BART tracks. 
on, on uh, the right hand side and on the left hand side or on of the screen, you see the main uh, parcel. Together, these parcels are all about eight, eight acres, a little more than eight acres. Um, but we might come back to this slide, but one of the things you can see kind of where there's that yellow markings on Fairmont. Um, this is all conceptual, the kind of work on the street, there's a lot to be worked out, but importantly, what's really being kind of anchored um, at the site is, and this really evolved through the community outreach that the development team, some of you might remember, they first were showing open space through the center of the site, but through all of the community outreach that the team has done, it's been, and looking at our own San Pablo Avenue specific plan and urban greening goals, um, moving and consolidating the open space to be largely along Fairmont really creates a real opportunity to create a distinctive downtown. And for the library, which is in the building closest to the BART tracks, um, we'll get into a site plan on uh, subsequent slides. The library is shown on the ground floor of the affordable housing project closest to the BART tracks and uh, alongside the big open space that you see on Fairmont. We might come back to this. Um, uh, next slide, please. So in terms of those goals and objectives I referred to, you can see uh, the URL at the bottom, but some of the key ones that really affect what we're talking about tonight, um, you know, the, one of the main reasons for BART doing this development is to contribute to vehicle miles traveled reduction and increase ridership. There's a lot of evidence that, at, that people who live right at those stations really do ride BART frequently off peak. Um, obviously, uh, post pandemic, the world is really different. Um, but utilizing these sites both for housing and bringing housing close to the station uh, makes BART more accessible to more people. Um, I haven't uh, said yet, but the, the, the project is about 750 units and 50% uh, of it is below market rate, including 30% that's low and very low income, 20% uh, which is considered workforce or moderate income housing and 50% market rate. So it'll be a real diverse um, group of people uh, living at uh, the BART station and um, accessing the amenities that are provided in uh, downtown. So access, um, part of the concept that some of you know about is that the city would also be working with its uh, with street parking to help provide some of the uh, parking need. And uh, depending on how much is still needed after BART uh, replaces some of the parking and with the change in ridership. Um, the shared goal of increasing the number of people or the percent of people who walk by can take transit in order to access BART. Uh, minimizing the need for a high amount of parking. Uh, parking is uh, very costly. And um, site design, a real important function that the team is really working hard to do and keep building upon the city's uh, efforts over the past uh, several years to enhance the Ohlone Greenway, create an active, activated Fairmont Avenue uh, with a lot of pedestrian foot traffic and destinations. And then of course, as we are discussing tonight, options for integrating the public library. Next slide, please. So this is the site plan, the ground floor plan of the uh, that uh, the one that you saw with the building elevations, and you can see the library in the kind of rust color and a little cafe up on Liberty Street, which is across from Starbucks. One of the uh, and that the next slide will show this even more, but you can see the library is going to have the benefit of uh, being right on that open space, and so uh, the development team has started to talk about kind of a library plaza and a library terrace and uh, really activating that. For the BART station itself, having this active library across from the station really creates a real civic um, destination, um, you know, with transit, library, open space, and obviously nearby are El Cerrito Plaza shopping opportunities, um, and various urban greening uh, that can be worked into, into this. So the library, uh, Don will get more from group four, we'll get more into kind of the size of the library, you, but you can see it's about 20,000 square feet um, that's being reserved in this site planning process uh, to study the library. Next slide, please. Um, so just again, honing in on this opportunity to really have the open space um, adjacent to the library and really defined by the library and uh, vice versa. Um, so this is just the, those big pictures are just kind of uh, uh, study places where the landscape architect and architect team are looking at inspiration for what this uh, green space could feel like um, right outside of the library. And it could create opportunities for kind of outdoor uh, interaction, outdoor library use. Um, there's also um, the ground floor will be very high, it will probably be, I think, 14 or 16 feet. And on September 7th, you can hear more about just kind of the opportunities for light and what it would really feel like within the buildings. Um, next slide, please. 
Um, so, so I'm going to now pass it on to Don, who's going to talk more about um, how we've kind of how we'll, how we're thinking of programming um, the library um, inside and working with the county library staff in order to think about its operational needs. And then when Don wraps up, I'll talk a little bit about next steps, uh, funding decision points, timeline for this development, and determining the library's uh, part the participation of the city with a library at this site. Um, so with that, Don, I will turn it over to All you. Right. Thank you, Melanie. Good evening, everyone. Aisha, it's not letting me turn on my video, so I can I can say uh, stay headless, but uh, yeah. All right, there we are. Okay, um, so basically, I get to talk about the library, the most important part of this transit oriented development study that we're working on. So super excited about that and super excited to um, be talking about the El Cerrito Library. So as we look at the next slide, as Melanie summarized, the El Cerrito Library is actually a partnership. It's a partnership between the city and the Contra Costa County Library. Um, the library does operate the or the county library does operate the library it provides staffing materials and supplementary funding is provided by the city currently you have 40 hours of base operations and then the city does fund an additional six hours each week as we look at the next slide um, El Cerrito has a long history of supporting their libraries your first library was in 1913 and I love the next bullet point because I can't say many buildings are older than I, but your building was built in 1949 and expanded in 1960. So that's quite a bit of time. And library services, your population has changed. You know, think of all the changes that had happened in this last 80 years, super significant. And, you know, the biggest impact on library service is the size. Um, trying to operate a library out of 6,000 square feet for your community is just super challenging. And what it really translates to is not having enough space to provide the programs and services your community needs. Um, additionally, the building does have major structural issues um, and it doesn't meet any current codes just because of its age. Our codes have changed significantly over the last six 60 years. Um, ADA is one of the big ones, so that really impedes access because accessibility codes are not met. Um, but just, you know, very high level, every aspect of the library's programs and services are really affected by the lack of space. As we go to the next slide, um, just from library planning purposes, we kind of like to look at future population growth where are you going to go and plan for that window of 20 years out this table is a nice summary of comparable communities as well as el cerrito we have the existing el cerrito library along the bottom in orange at 6500 square feet showing your 2010 population all the way out to 2040 and as we look at the 2040 which is kind of that 20-year planning window that we like to use you're really at the bottom of the chart at the 0.22 square foot per capita. Um, where we're looking at headed uh, with the new library in which your previous needs assessment had identified is a library about 21,000 square feet. Now this planning range has changed a little bit in the last 10 years or so where we don't actually target a specific square foot per capita, but kind of develop the range. And for a county library, um, with as many libraries and service points as Contra Costa County has, anywhere in the 0.6 to 0.8 square foot per capita would be typical um, for what we'd see as a planning goal. So where we're proposing right now at 0.73 with the 2040 population is right in that kind of perfect range. And I think an interesting one to look at just before we jump off this slide is Pleasant Hill, uh, population 33,000 uh, back in 2010. 10, but just open and as we're looking at their 2040 pop um, at 0.7 and so I don't know if anyone's had a chance to visit that new library but that you can see would be very comparable to what's being proposed for El Cerrito. Next slide. 
So what is a 21st century library and what can we fit in 20,000 square feet? We can fit quite a lot, which is super exciting. We really can fit something for everybody. Um, starting right from the very beginning, there will be space for the friends. And I know the friends are super excited to work with the city and the foundation uh, in planning space for them as it goes into the next phases of the project, making sure we have a marketplace, which is the new popular materials, technology, meeting rooms, group study spaces, incubator space, really that can be called incubator space, it can be called maker space. It's really program space uh, to support library programs as well as partner programs and then enough space for the adults and the children and a teen space and then as we're looking at moving into a 20,000 square foot library thereabouts want to make sure that we have efficiency that we have efficient material flow and efficient staff space so even though the library grows the staff don't have to grow proportionally to the square footage and then just walking through the next slides, just give you a closer up image, you know, what would be in the adult space in addition to um, all different kinds of materials and media, making sure we have a variety of seating for both quiet reading, studying, as well as collaboration, the children's space, uh, really space for all of their materials, activities, um, space for them to be children, move about and have different types of furniture to support that. And spaces that are really left out of these smaller libraries that we have are the teen spaces. So making sure that we have teen furniture, spaces where they can collaborate, work on their group projects, do gaming, really inviting and pulling the teens into the library is important. On the next slide. Uh, the marketplace that's that new and popular collection. One of the things we'll really want to work and we've been working with uh, the TOD project team on is making sure we have that efficient material flow. So as books come into the library, they go into the staff space and you can pick up your holds, new media is located here as well as technology. Uh, one of the things that came up in our stakeholder meetings for the uh, meeting rooms, sorry, on the previous slide, uh, was making sure that we have after hours access to the meeting room. Uh, this really is an opportunity to leverage that space and to make sure that it's available for library programs, but also used by the community. And then we have the group study spaces. These are just perfect for uh, COVID. Actually, it would have been co perfect as the library opens, being able to work remotely, uh, supporting homeschooling, supporting homeowners associations, all different things from knitting clubs. I know one of our libraries, all the, all the knitters meet there and it's perfect in the group study room because you wouldn't realize it, but knitting needles make a lot of noise. And the more you get together, the noisier they get. Uh, technology, state-of-the-art technology, and again, I talked about efficient staff space. Next slide. Uh, this matrix, some of you may look familiar, it is uh, identifies all the different criteria that we like to look at when we're looking at potential library sites. And we've summarized uh, the El Cerrito Plaza TOD project on the right, which is called option two. And then option one was the standalone site. Um, previously working with the city, trying to identify a standalone site, there's not one currently identified for us to really compare this to so we didn't include any criteria or any rankings on that criteria for the standalone site but when we look at the plaza site um, you know great visibility great access close to transit um, wanting to make sure the parking supports that and I know Melanie's gonna or had just talked a lot about that and one of the strategies to make that parking accessible to make the library accessible economic impact so this is something um, you know library staff can speak to that a library really is a magnet and the number of people who come in and use your library is probably more than any other public building and a 20,000 square foot library can actually act as an anchor store and so really something that can really drive the economics around it and support other retail and support that downtown vision and that supports that placemaking 
and then also the quality of life, just having the library easily accessible, close to transit, um, easy for the community to use, to ride to, walk to, is going to be huge. And then again, that plays into that program synergy, right? Having the library there to support the downtown, accessible off your trail system, close to transit, are all good things. When we look at land cost, none of that's been identified for either option, but when we do look at construction cost, uh, this is one of the things that really is a differentiator. When we look at having a library being part of a shared use facility, there is significant cost savings as opposed to a standalone site. All of the infrastructure that you have to do for a standalone site, like your parking lots, like your utilities, like all of the perimeter costs of the exterior of the building envelope that is all now shared and wrapped into the overall cost. So you can see that the cost for the TOD project is about two thirds that or even more of a standalone project. So definitely potential for significant cost savings there. And then just wanted to bring to light some other precedent projects. Um, these joint facilities, libraries and TODs, parts of downtowns are really on the upswing. Um, currently, Santa, uh, Santa Cruz is planning their replacement of their central library, which is located right downtown Santa Cruz. It's going to be part of a TOD project. Uh, parking is going to be shared with the downtown parking, as well as the residential and retail. Um, so super excited. I know the community has been working hard on that project, and it's just right now in the design phase. Uh, another library that's been open for quite a while now, I want to say at least 10 or 15 years, is the Hollywood branch in Multnomah County, probably one of the first uh, library projects in a TOD uh, facility. Very successful. Um, parking for this facility is actually, again, part of a public parking a garage uh, behind the building close to transit. Uh, again, big cost savings supports that downtown and that placemaking opportunities. Then on the next slide, we have another library uh, that is in Silver Springs uh, and close to a light rail station, uh, co-located with an art center. Again, uh, access to public parking is what's used to support this facility. And then one that some of you may be familiar with is the Chavez branch in Oakland. And this is uh, part of the Fruitvale BART station, very close. Um, one of the things I think that is a challenge for this branch is it's actually located on the second floor. And so in talking with the staff at the Oakland Public Library, they really didn't think that was necessarily the best option. So really excited to see that we really are located in kind of premier real estate location. First floor, highly visible, um, is being currently proposed for the El Cerrito Plaza location. And then I think I get to pass this back to Melanie at this point. Great. Let's see if I'm on. Um, so I do see some questions that are still open, um, and Don will pass on to you a little bit about library program synergy when we get to Q&A. Um, so some of the things that we've heard, and I actually, um, yeah, this cued uh, to something that I had not gotten a chance to say earlier. So one thing that we hear regularly, of course, is will there be sufficient parking for library users? Of course, in terms of the overall parking scenario, we'll talk um, more about that at the next meeting and in others, but for the library, what I'd love to say is, so the city is planning to manage the parking nearest the library and nearest the plaza so that it's high turnover parking. So, you know, two hour parking, for example, so that it's not used all day by uh, BART patrons who might be going to the city all day or somewhere else. So that is something still in the works. Um, I'm happy to report that city council approved uh, us filling a position called Sustainable Transportation Program Manager, and hopefully that person will be coming on soon. And that's going to be working with BART, with the city, to really develop a good on-street parking management program, as well as many other things. Um, BART is looking at a, you know, there, there might be an e-bike lending library, there's going to be a bike station, there's going to be, we're going to keep looking at, you know, adding shared vehicles. So there's all kinds of ways that we're going to be trying to work on access to, to the downtown. 
uh, but specifically for libraries, and we've heard from the librarians, you know, people take out many, many books, um, they need to have uh, close proximate access to the library. So that's something we're really aware of. And we are also really looking forward um, to working out kind of a system that works uh, best for everybody. Um, that said, um, well, when we get into the timeline, we can look at this. So one of the things I was going to say is we won't be breaking ground. So just so everyone knows, we haven't said. So in terms of um, you know, worries about how quickly some of this will come to be, the first building wouldn't break ground for probably until 2024. And it's likely that the library would be even after that. So we are talking about not a super lengthy planning process, but something that's not imminent right now. And we do still have time to solve the various pieces of the puzzle. Uh, so similarly, how can I drop off or pick up my books convenient to the library? Same, same answer. Uh, will the library be safe being so closely located next to the BART station? I think this is something that we'll keep getting into as if the city council decides to proceed with this library, that is, uh, you know, how, how do libraries handle some of the uh, pressures that they yeah. uh, experience? And Don, you might. Yeah, and this is, you know, this is happening in all libraries, not just ones located next to BART stations, but downtown libraries, uh, libraries that are in more urban locations. And so, you know, it is a concern. It is something the library is very familiar in dealing with. And it is something just even as we're looking at the space design, we can address as well. So just as we look at how people come into the building, where the security surveillance location is, how visible everybody is, in the library, sight lines, all those things can be tied in to support uh, the safe design of the library space. Thanks, Don. Um, yes, and uh, the next one, will the meeting room have after hours access? Um, we'll be talking a little bit in a moment about the Library Foundation and the Friends of the Library, um, but this is one of the things that's been brought up by them. Um, and we know, as Don was talking about, the, the various needs that a library um, uh, fulfills and some of those are community meeting yeah. spaces. Um, so that would be something we'd be looking to try to figure out how to integrate. Yeah, Go ahead, yeah and the, the location on the site totally supports this so that we can have independent access to the meeting room, access to the restrooms to support that. And it's really just more of an operational policy question at that point. Um, and similarly, we've heard from the friends and that the friends of the library uh, you know, further engagement to discuss kind of their needs for really bringing the community and their community in to help the library become a real uh, local local place. So when we get into the schedule next, you'll see that we definitely, um, at this moment, let's see what the next slide is, if I have a timeline at the next slide. Um, well, let me go into this again, and then we will actually, uh, Asa, um, I think I, I'm gonna get to that, but you'll see that we're gonna have, yeah, so next slide, please. Um, so the next steps, as I mentioned, for the for the overall project are this design review board and planning commission uh, public meeting in two weeks. Um, after that, we are going to really be digging into these parking issues that we've talked about, uh, mobility programs, various ways that people can make the those that are using BART can maybe access BART various ways. Um, I think some of you know that the majority of the riders do come within a mile, so we're looking at you know how can some of those users uh, find. Uh, a different way to get there to make the parking available for those that can't um, get there another way. Um, and then we would, if, if the city council, once we determine funding options, um, the city council decides to proceed, um, we would then really dig into this design process, some of the stuff that Don's been talking about and doing a lot of community engagement about how the, how the interior space would be used. I see some great questions that I'll be getting to in a moment on the Q&A, so thank you for putting those. Um, and one of those, uh, I, we, we haven't emphasized a lot, but BART and the development team is really excited um, about the library. They really see uh, what potential it has to create a real civic de destination to serve not only their residents, but all of our existing residents. Um, and it's a really good ground floor uh, use in an affordable housing project, and especially adjacent to where there's already so much retail and um, across the street and down the street on San Pablo Avenue. Um, uh, next slide, please. So in terms of timeline, what I'd like to say is right now, um, AB 2923 creates a, a kind of a very different process than we would be using for a regular specific plan process. This project is obviously a lot bigger as well. It's on public agency land um, and it has state legislation um, associated with it. Uh, so there's a lot of differences um, in the way that this process uh, will be going forward. So we'll talk about that a lot on September 7th. But right now, the development team and BART are incorporating the library into the site plan 
um, as a part of the vision, really to fulfill the vision. The next steps, however, in order to take it to the next phase where it would fully go into design um, would be something that the city's gonna have to determine whether we can uh, and want the library in this location. When that happens, that, pro that, that phase of the project will also then get to go into the full building design, including the residents on top of it. So because it'll take us, the city a while to determine funding and then to secure that funding, the development team has worked with us to put that into phase three. Um, so the development team has phase one, which is going to, this will all be talked much more about in September 7th, and 7th, the phases, but for the purposes now, the library is definitely being incorporated into master planning. So when looking at open space, it's helping to define what the open space is. It's a part of our parking and access work. Um, it, we're working with the library staff in terms of circulation needs and operational needs just to make sure that the site plan really accommodates a potential library. And I think um, the development team has definitely articulated how much vision, you know, it just it really enriches it as well as a, a BART has, has stated this as well. Um, but again, it won't be until phase three as we figure out these other items. So you can see in the kind of vertical yellow bubble, um, we talk about the access and mobility like the last slide did, the funding strategy, and then if council does determine to proceed, there will be a lot of fun design work um, that really engages all of you in how this would work. Um, I do want to point out, let's see what the next slide is. I think it might be our last. Um, as we're getting into this, I also just want to point out tonight, I think I've noticed some people on, on that I didn't uh, introduce. So there are, um, I believe the BART, uh, BART board director, uh, Rebecca Saltzman is on the call and listening. Um, uh, Lisa, council members uh, Motoyama and Fideli are both on. I'm probably gonna miss some folks, uh, send me a note if I do, or just know they're there. Um, the, uh, uh, Michael Fisher, the county library commissioner um, and BART staff, as well as some of the architects, uh, landscape architects and, and developers. So I think everyone's listening. I think they really have been uh, doing a lot of community outreach and getting to know the community as much as possible as they're proceeding with this design. Um, we're gonna, uh, you know, Dawn and I will try to answer most questions. Um, and then as you see, there will be lots of other opportunities for input, especially if we really get into the, into the nitty gritty and details of library planning. So I am gonna kind of take some of the questions. Um, oh, so on this, uh, we put the URLs for all kinds of great ways that you can get information. So um, this web page, this presentation will be put in various places, um, but including on the city's web page, which would be elcerito.org backslash TOD, as well as elcerito.org backslash library. So you'll be able to find it there. Um, if you wanted to stay up to date on the project in general, we try to put key dates um, in our monthly e-news, and this time we sent it out several times. Um, but the uh, elcerito.org backslash comdev is where you would sign up for our e-news. Um, obviously key dates also the city manager puts in the city manager's update for those of you that follow that. And then importantly, the El Cerrito uh, Library Foundation and Friends of the El Cerrito Library, uh, all of you on this call, I presume are, are you know, library, library aficionados. So regardless of whether we, uh, what happens at this library, this is really um, staying in touch um, with this group. And we didn't put the county library webpage on here, but it's on our library uh, a web page, and uh, some of some of you obviously can find it too. And if we do get into the actual library planning, you know, the librarians will be a very active piece of that. Um, at this meeting, we really wanted to just kind of give you this overall concept and handle kind of high-level questions so that you could see uh, kind of what what's brewing. Um, in terms of the questions, um, I know we have. Uh, we'll go to hands in a moment, but I'm going to handle some of the few that I have seen that have not been answered. If you all go to question and answer, you'll see several questions that were able to be answered. Uh, directly, and those are all available for you. Um, in terms of funding, several have asked about uh, grants, value engineering, federal infrastructure bill. So that is all stuff we're exploring now. The um, Our eligibility, we do know that there's a, a state uh, library grant that generally favors life safety issues. Um, and in census tracts that are, are, are very low income, so we're exploring our eligibility for that. Um, all of these will always require a significant match. So that's a big piece that we're looking into. What are the various uh, funding sources that the city could access? Um, will BART give free rent to the library? So those terms are also being um, uh, worked out. Um, obviously, BART is also an agency that, um, you know, is, is working to be sustainable and has to manage the kind of 
costs and resources. Um, so I think most of this is really um, still under discussion and probably within the next couple of months, we will have a presentation for city council um, on the various uh, funding possibilities and kind of which funding sources can leverage others and what the timing would be. Again, this will be important because once we get through the master plan entitlement phase, the library will kind of pause until the city is able to really know whether it's gonna be able to commit. And we will be working with BART and the developers to look at how we keep advancing things um, until the actual construction works. But we're also still looking at whether it would be leased or owned as a condo. So there's various pieces of delivery um, that are, are queued up. Um, what would be, cause the library to be omitted from the final plan value engineering? So it really is whether the city can afford, as, as Don's uh, analysis showed you, we worked with the developers to generate cost estimates. Um, it's definitely less costly than uh, other options that the city would be able to pursue by, by participating um, with BART and with the developers in this. So really it'll be, I, at this moment in time, my best answer to that is whether the city can, whether we can collectively figure out how to finance it. Um, so somebody's question is, can you speak a bit to any innovative programming or resources that are being proposed, i.e. to draw more users to use the library? Um, Don, uh, you might want to speak to that uh, quickly and yeah. we'll probably get more into that once we decide to actually do the library. And, and I think that's my point is some of the resources or some of the details of this specifically have not been decided because even if we were to start working on this tomorrow, by the time this library moves ahead in two years, it'd probably be obsolete. And so, you know, one of the design strategies is super flexibility because the library is very agile. It's going to adapt to the community and it's going to continue to change what it provides and how it serves. And so um, the details of exactly what innovative resources and different things are, we don't have right yet. Um, because again, that's yet to come during the design, uh, which would be uh, happen first would be the programming that would then be supported by the design effort. Um, I think another question, which maybe I didn't say, so BART will be entering into a long-term lease with the developers, right? So the, then how the library fits in is still under discussion. Um, someone asked, can, um, dedicated parking for the library be added. So dedicated parking to construct is about $80,000 per space. And then it has ongoing operations and maintenance costs. So at this point, we aren't exploring putting it in the structure. Um, BART will be talking, or the developer on September 7th will talk about replacement parking. There's always the option, depending on how that evolves over time, on maybe weekends or different shared use. So I think it's an ongoing conversation, but the number of parking spaces, you know, even if you just put in 10, you could imagine how much that would take away from programming. So the advantage that the city has is that the public right away can be managed. Um, so right now, special dedicated parking is not being uh, included um, in, the, in the project. Um, I think, um, I see another question, which is what uh, what is the funding needed for? So it's really the the there's two pieces to so the so the city's portion of actually developing the the structure, but then importantly also it's all of the interior um, tenant improvements um, that would make the library the library. Um, what special attention will be given to the uh, presentation and display of uh, Contra Costa County Library's LGBTQ collection? Um, this will be one of those things that, like Dawn just said, that'll be really when we get into the, once the city can determine that it's participating and can, can fund the library, then we can get into all the exciting uh, kind of programming um, questions. And what is the re reason for locating the library to what's conceived instead of the corner of Liberty and Fairmont? So I think that question can also be brought up again on September 7th. Um, I think there's uh, several reasons that it was it was moved around. Um, and so I think on September 7th, the team can get more into that. Um, BART was definitely interested because it really helped to activate uh, what's kind of the Oak Street uh, busway and continuation of Oak Street that's shown on the site plan and really just creating a real transit library kind of hub space. And I believe also, and uh, I could uh, find an architect that's on, but I think they can address this on September 7th as well. And I know that question was from Steve Price, who I uh, anticipate will be there on September 7th, but um, the uh, landscape architects and um, 
Oh, there was something else I was thinking about. Oh, the relationship to the Ohlone Greenway and open space uh, was another big piece of, of kind of, and the grade changes and where the open space was going to land in terms of opportunity for terrace. Uh, we'll be looking, having to look at access and ADA access. So there's a lot going on and it was moved around a lot. And they can talk a little bit about the iterations that occurred during the site planning. But it was looked at at one point at that corner at Liberty. Um, is where it was being looked. And the kind of what's fun now is there's a, a small cafe proposed and we're hoping that that cafe kind of has this fun relationship to the library that the operator that would be chosen would kind of help also um, just build that that feeling of, of a library space in Plaza. Um, um, I also see, uh, are there any plan B locations for the new library at this point? So there are not any active plan B locations, um, meaning not at the BART site. That question is not asking. That question is asking whether some other site. I've heard people say that Bed Bath & Beyond is vacant, which it's uh, not gonna be. The plaza has several tenants uh, waiting for that um, and exploring that space. So there isn't, and Don, maybe you can speak to this. I know uh, uh, city managers on, but at this point, after all of the various studies that had occurred in the past, it's uh, kind of, Currently, the orientation is really towards this site, and that'll be something that the, the council will need to determine whether they want to proceed with this or keep exploring. One of the things you might remember on Dawn's slide comparing a site that we don't know versus this site, um, there is no um, obvious other site. Um, right. And so from a timing standpoint, this one's kind of a known, and the unknown could be something that we keep working on. Right. And one of the other questions I think was regarding program synergy that was on that evaluation criteria slide as well. And really, when we look at program synergy, what we're talking about is what other activities are happening close by that could complement each other. So in this downtown location, you can envision, you know, music in the street, markets, food truck events, things like that, all that could be complemented by different things happening in the library. And so that synergistic relationship between somebody able to do uh, trip chaining by going to the grocery store, stopping at the library, you know, doing all their errands together. Those are their synergistic relationships. And, you know, there's going to be different sites have different opportunities. Um, you know, ones that were closer to the middle school potentially had different synergistic relationships with the middle school kids being convenient, easy to get to. The downtown side has more opportunity uh, for this placemaking, economic impact, things like that. So, great. Thank you so much for that. Um, I have one more question in the uh, question and answer right now. People can keep sending those, but then I think we're going to go to hands raised. And I believe the director, Director Saltzman, might be uh, have her hand raised. I can't, um, Asa, I think maybe you can. Uh, for some reason, I'm not seeing everything. So I have to work on my view. Um, the current one is, what is your current best estimate about when the city will make a go, no-go decision on the library component in this project? That's a great question. I think that we'll have a lot more information um, for council. Um, before the end of this calendar year, we will have a lot more information about potential sources. Um, and then it might be somewhat of an incremental process in determining the actual yes, let's keep spending substantial uh, funds on design or, um, but I think that by the end of this year or very, very early in 23, I think we'll have a lot more information for council um, in terms of what those options are. Um, so Aisa, are you gonna? Yeah, thanks, Melanie. I'm gonna actually, um, thank you for those who submitted questions in the Q&A. We will post those along with the PowerPoint presentation. Um, in the weeks to come, but if you if there's anyone on the call on the webinar who wishes to speak, please raise your hand. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and allow um, Director Saltzman to speak. Good evening. Um, my name is Rebecca Saltzman. I'm the BART director that represents the station and much of El Cerrito. Um, but I'm actually primarily here this evening as a resident of El Cerrito and a mom. Um, I use the library a lot. I'm there pretty much every week. I just dropped off some books today. And so I'm really excited about the potential. I, Though I love our library, it can use a lot more love and some more space and some more resources. And so I'm just thrilled to get to work with the city on this project that is important, I think, to all of us and important to me personally. You know, my daughter's two and a half. This will be something 
that for the rest of her life will will be an asset to her and everybody around her. Um, and just wanted to share, I just, for the first time, my wife and I took our daughter um, on BART to the downtown Berkeley library this past weekend. Um, we had never taken her there. And they have a whole floor dedicated to children's um, materials and books. And we clearly won't have space like that. It's a very large library, but that one floor was bigger than our entire library. And it really made me imagine what uh, a bigger, more resource library could be in El Cerrito. So very excited this is moving forward. And um, anybody in the community who wants to seek Bart's perspective, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to talk and and want to work with you all to make this happen. So thank you for the city for initiating this and we're, we're happy to partner with you. Great, thank you, Director Saltzman. Um, I see another question that I'm gonna take and then I see you can see if there's more uh, hands raised. Um, one has, uh, uh, Elizabeth, I see you have, will the city have any control over decisions on staffing collections or programs that might be cut to save money? Um, Don, you might be able to say more, but one thing that we didn't talk about, right? So uh, Don did talk about that the um, city does add some hours to the base hours that the library provides. Um, a larger library will require additional funds for the same amount, uh, additional staffing. So one of the things um, that has come up other times, so a single story library is uh, more efficient, definitely. Um, to operate from a staffing standpoint. So this is uh, one of the reasons it's a single story. Um, but there are, uh, I think the city, I don't know we'd say any control over decisions on staffing collections or programs, but I think there's a collaborative um, conversation um, around this uh, regarding county resources and city resources and if they're special. Is there anything, Dawn, that you know more about? Um, no, I, I think it's just the continued collaborative relationship that you have. Um, yeah, and so I do think that um, there are, as I mentioned, county librarian, uh, city, uh, county library staff on the call as well. And I do think that, um, you know, we really wanted to orient to this opportunity and we can talk with them as well as the friends and the foundation and just kind of what next meetings there are to interact with the community around um, around gen general questions around the library. But definitely as if we were to move forward and uh, into the next phase, it'll be a lot of robust conversations about that. Thank you. Um, our next request to speak is Dan Schulman. I'm going to go ahead and allow you to speak. Oh, thanks. Okay. You hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, Dan, Dan Schulman. I live about a half mile away um, from the BART station. Uh, I've been closely following uh, the project with uh, several other members of the community um, as part of a group called Plaza for the People. Um, we're very excited about it. Um, I, I think one, I guess, thought I have, I, so I was the one who asked if there's a, a plan B for another library location. Um, and the reason why I asked that was just because the way, it, the way I kind of watched this presentation was it seemed like, well, if it doesn't work out here, then, then, then I guess we're kind of stuck in terms of a new library, which would be really sad. So so I kind of hope it works out here. Um, it seems like it would be really great to be here. But I guess I also feel like I, I don't know what the other choice is. You know, is if, if there's no other possible location to consider, and we also don't really know what the TOD site could look like without the library, you know, is, is there another option where we where the, the TOD, you know, is designed differently and the library is located somewhere else? And, you know, how does that compare to putting the library in the TOD? Like, it seems like there's no real choice there um, and maybe that's just how it has to be because of you know there maybe aren't really a lot of other good sites in town um, but I guess that's just one thing that I, I don't know if there's a way to give ourselves more options because otherwise it seems like a lot of our eggs are kind of in this basket it's a nice basket it would be great if it works here but I, I just get nervous that what if it doesn't so thank you yeah Dan um, I can speak to that a little bit um, and um, so I do think when you go to the library webpage, lcrita.org, there's some of the studies. So when Sean just showed, uh, when Don just showed you the one kind of unknown option, there were other known options that were were studied um, back in 2019, 18, 17, and 16. <laughs> um, so um, 
Uh, let's see if I can track a couple questions you asked. One was definitely like, what would the TOD look like without it? So that reminded me there is going to be a moment that the development team, you know, there's the the that time frame that I showed we could go back to, you know, they have to move based on when their various funding sources are available. And this, the library is being shown in the affordable housing development. And that is, it is a, a huge heavy lift um, uh, funding affordable housing. So we're working closely with Related and their partner Saha as well as Holiday and the whole architect team, um, uh, Paya Talk and um, Van Meters, William Pollock. So to really schedule out when this project in order to get its financing and be built is needed. So we're going to have to work a bit on their schedule. So there's going to be a moment that the ship sails. So you're right, right? There's going to be a moment that the city's either in or not on this one and the, and, and the TOD would go forward. There's various ways of that they'd be looking at that ground floor. I think it would be some smaller amount of commercial as well as kind of community serving, um, you know, resident serving spaces. So I think their original, when they first um, responded to the proposed RFQ, it showed about 8,000 square feet of commercial or this 20,000 square foot library plus the little cafe. Um, they haven't actually been designing that. I think there's a lot of real hope and uh, desire for the, for the library really to be a piece of it. I think, like I said, it's a real integral piece to, to the civic de destination for some of the reasons that Don um, articulated. Um, but um, if this weren't to take place, which we would have to know if we went back to that timeline within, within a year, year and a half um, that we were wanting to proceed, um, I guess going back to that earlier question, maybe a little longer than that, but um, we would have to go back to the drawing board, you're right. And so maybe there's something uh, that that arises. Um, I think one of the things that Don's slide showed is from a, a cost standpoint, most of the other options would be a lot uh, more costly. Um, if they, it, most of the unknown other options would be more costly. Um, we have asked, council asked us a couple of years ago to every time that we kind of reviewed a new multifamily project being built, you know, to just talk about it and bring it into that conversation. And it was usually also a timing issue later. Like, well, we're ready to design now. Do you guys have your money? Um, parking, they're having a hard time parking enough for their own residents on just kind of a single floor um, podium or double level. So we haven't, um, so obviously the community is uh, able to identify other programs, but we have back in, if you look at the documents, there were studies of various other uh, publicly owned sites, which we just, in a small town like this, we don't have surplus sites or low cost land. Um, Thanks, Melanie. Um, our next speaker is gonna be Al Miller. Al, you should be able to unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, new libraries in other cities, when they've opened, the number of people using that library is significantly increased. Uh, that only is really valid and good if the library is open. Right now, our library, because of its size, etc., is limited. Uh, even if the city wanted to pay for sa Sunday and Monday hours, they can't. Uh, when we get a new library, I don't know what the max hours will be, but if the city council isn't planning to fund as many hours as needed to keep it open as many hours as possible, I think they're going to have trouble getting reelected again. Now, uh, also, uh, I think it would be very informative for BART if I don't know who would do it, whether it would BART would do it or we would do it, we, the city would do it, to try to get a grant from some regional transportation function to find out how much it would cost BART to have zero cost to BART from Del Norte to the plaza or plaza till Del Norte. Uh, that would, I think, encourage a very large part of the city's population to use the new library because they could just go to the Del Norte site and ride free, et cetera. Uh, right, uh, get a grant to test, run it out as a test case. And the last question I would have is who would actually do the construction of the 
library inside this 20,000 square feet. Is that something that the BART developer would do or the city would have to hire a contractor uh, to do it? I'm assuming the city gets to have the fun of designing the library. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Uh, let me maybe touch on a few of those. Um, yes, the city is actually um, working to include extra hours in our budget projections. So part of our conversation with the library about what it would take to staff a larger, um, more even more utilized um, library, and we are going to be including that and maintenance, et cetera, in our projections. You know, what would a new library uh, uh, cost in an ongoing um, fashion? Um, I love the uh, the Del Norte to Plaza idea. Um, I've thought often that kind of a one to two stop kind of urban fair would be a really, especially as we're doing all this development without, uh, with very low parking along this corridor, you know, what would it be like, you know, to, to incentivize. So I love the idea of a pilot and potentially a, a grant program. And like I said, we do have the, our, and, and, and like you said, collecting the data, how does that really, um, you know, how does that change people's behavior and access um, when we're looking at a, at a, at a, civic amenity on one part of town, how do we increase kind of equity and access? So I think that's a, a, a great idea. Um, and yes, um, I, there, there might've been some other things, but those are the ones that I, I wanted to refer to that we are uh, thinking about the extra hours that it would take um, to, just the, to just even staff a larger one, even if it weren't worth more out or the extra costs of a larger library, even if there weren't more of staffing a larger library, even if there were not more hours. And if there are more hours, um, what that would look like as well. Um, as the community has definitely articulated that. And I uh, thank you for the Del Norte to Plaza. That would um, you know, just be interesting on a lot of levels as there's activity at both of those hubs, uh, making those more connected. Great, thank you. Um, next, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to Steve Price. Steve, um, you should be able to speak. Oops, you can hear me? Yep. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, so I asked that question earlier, what is the reason for locating the library <clears throat> um, at the present site instead of the corner of Liberty and Fairmont? And I guess <clears throat> behind that question is <clears throat> um, who the users are. Um, certainly, um, as a longtime user of the Greenway, I'm really excited that this is going to be accessible to uh, people who are travel on the Greenway. Uh, but I'm also... Uh, aware that this is a county library and people in the Richmond Annex, this is their library. Uh, certainly people that are, there's another library in, in another direction, but the, for, for many people living in the Richmond Annex, this is going to be the closest. And then there's all those people who live uh, west of, of San Pablo Avenue in El Cerrito, you know, at the base of the Albany Hill in between there and Central Avenue. So <clears throat> I just, I'm, I guess I think I've, I just hope the, the developers or the designers will uh, bear in mind um, those people and how uh, this library will present itself to people coming from multiple directions. Thanks. Yeah, I think that, um, like I said, so a couple, a couple, there, BART has invested significant resources. Oh, I forgot to say this. I think it was also with Al. So BART is 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 active, uh, actively looking and helping get grants for some of the transportation improvements that, that are needed around. So we've heard, for example, in that access planning process that east-west bikeways are, are needed, right? That the north-south is really great with the greenway, but east-west. So we're looking at um, I think right now we're showing another, you know, so there's a lot of facilities that are being uh, coordinated and that BART is also helping us to work to get grants for. Um, similarly, the Sustainable Transportation Program Manager will be looking at some of the stuff you've talked about. So what I look forward to is one of their first tasks when they're on board is also really doing a library parking needs um, in this location uh, study and looking at how we would, so that we can make sure that we really integrate that with our other downtown, downtown parking program needs so that the development team um, architects, landscape architects, that we're all really more informed about, about that piece um, as we develop that over the next couple of years. And then maybe just mentioning, Melanie, that the 
the design team for the TOD has really embraced the idea of the library being on this site. And when I say this site, I mean the entire site. And if you go back to that site plan, you can even see how they've identified like the library walk to get you up to the library plaza. And, you know, just being able to use um, landscape features, cues to create these outdoor spaces, which is going to expand that library significantly. But really trying to, I think it was the site plan the next one down um, with the the other direction yeah um, that has the those bubbles right there and so actually at the corner of liberty and central actually there is the library is going to announce itself um, and then it's going to be carried all the way up to the corner at oak and central i think is what's been discussed in some of the early ideas that are demonstrated here yeah, or Liberty and Fairmont. Yeah. Thank you, Fairmont. I knew yeah. that. <laughs> um, um, great. And thanks again for those of you that are putting comments in the Q&A and others may want to kind of review and look at those. Um, Aisa, are we able to collect those at the end or that's going to be a part of our transcript? We yeah, can, yeah, that will be. Um, I'm going to actually move on to Sherry Drobner and allow you to speak, Sherry. Great. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great, thanks. Um, just actually, Al Miller made a comment and I didn't hear the answer. I was curious about the relationship in terms of the design of the library. What's the role of the county vis-a-vis -vis the city in terms of the design of the library? Is the, the because it, it, we're talking about a, it's a county library, but are we saying that the city will be um, fully designing the library? I, I, I just wanted to understand the relationship a little bit better. Yeah, so the so the city owns the building currently, right? But the county operates it, so it's really hand in hand. It needs to meet the county's um, operational um, needs, and I think the county, like I said, there is the county librarian um, is on the call tonight um, and listening. And so, um, if you want to raise your hand and say anything, Allison, uh, feel free. Otherwise, I think there'll be other opportunities. But it's really again a collaborative relationship we can't um but the city would be leading it right the city would be leading uh it would be and you know it's not that we might not end up talking to the county about some you know pot potentially participating in some of the funding i mean that might be a piece of it um but in general it's the city kind of initiating um this process but in but with the county's blessing is that don would you want to add something to that yeah, I, and I, I think Allison would reiterate just um, it is a partnership operationally. It has to be designed to the specifications and the functionality for the library to operate it efficiently. But in terms of design inspiration and kind of the uh, design values that are going to go into the building, the, the city would oversee that and lead the process uh, typically in the county programs. That's how it's happened. Thank you. Hey, so do you have more hands or should I go to the Q&A also? Um, you can go ahead and it looks like at this point in time, we don't have, uh, I don't see any other hands raised. Um, if you wish to raise your hand and ask a question or make a comment, feel free to do so. Um, but there are, um, there is a, in the, in the Q&A um, from Gary, McCorney, again, not a question, but a statement that both the Friends and the Library Foundation have taken official positions in support of this project as a positive addition to the developing downtown that is evolving around the plaza and the BART Station Foundation Board. Thank you, Gary. And our librarian um, just reiterated that Melanie and Don were, were correct um, on the previous question that Sherry um, inquired on. And I said there was one other um, comment from Gary too that I answered. Um, which yeah, one? again, I think everyone can go to the answered questions. So there's a lot of no. I I don't think people are able to see them. Okay. Uh, somebody commented and said they're not able to see them right now. So I think that's why we wanted to read them. Yeah, and we can um, download them and publish them um, with the post meeting materials. Thank you, Aisa. So Sean, was there one that you wanted to? Yeah, uh, uh, again, not a question, but a statement that it is the intent of the Library Foundation to develop resources to support programs of interest to the community at the library by creating a permanent endowment in support of creating programming. Several other foundations in our county are doing such programs, for example, live from the library in Walnut Creek. 
Yeah, so I think that um, that's really exciting about the foundation and the friends. I think it's, uh, you know, just a real uh, great opportunity. They've obviously been so involved in the in the current library and uh, being able to to kind of uh, just kind of continue to water it and help it blossom into a more modern library that serves even more people. Um, I know that in previous presentations that Don or the library has talked about, this small library serves a lot of people. And those of you that use it regularly know that. Um, so just being able to expand that um, uh, is a real opportunity for all the stakeholders. Um, so with that, um, I think I, there might've been another one that just came in, a question. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, somebody told us that they can only see some. So Aisa, we think that we're gonna be able to publish all of these questions and we will put them we will collect them all and they will be on the meeting materials um, at the elcerito.org backslash library. Um, we're pretty good um, at getting those all up. Um, again, September 7th, if you also, we, you will see that for those of you that are signed up to Comdev e News on September 1st, our emails will go out with all the info, but that meeting, Sean is at a, a 7.30 meeting um, and that meeting is 100% dedicated to the joint study session. So it'll be all about this project. And obviously the library is, uh, as opposed to this meeting where the library was the main component, um, that one, it'll just be one component of many, um, but uh, having all of you who are interested in the library participate in that meeting will be really helpful. And then there will be ongoing community engagement, um, obviously throughout the whole development process, um, but then specifically um, at city council when we start uh, really talking about funding and financing and then in design, if, if we can go forward. So thanks all. That was uh, for those of you that didn't see. There were, you know, various times forty people participating. So thank you so much. Um, and um, you know, our city emails are all on our our community development webpage. So if you have follow up thoughts or questions that you just want to pose to any of us, uh, we'll get them to the right right person. Um, otherwise, we really appreciate everybody's engagement and looking at this really exciting opportunity. And while they're on. If they're still on, really, again, Bart and the development team, as as Don just alluded to, have really embraced um, embrace this. It's an exciting uh, it's an exciting project that really helps to define and develop downtown. And you know, it's good for there's going to be obviously trade offs always, and there's going to be tensions and difficult difficult things that we have to figure out. I think, but everybody's excited about what it can be. And I think from those precedents that Don shared, right? It's 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 a context that has some real opportunities. Um, so with that, thank you all. And um